Over the next few weeks, this YouTube channel is going to look a little bit different. In late 2019, large parts of Australia were affected by devastating bushfires. Road Trip for Good is an initiative that helps people to go back to these areas to see them regenerate and recover. So along with the recipes that you know and love, you'll also be hearing some of the stories of the people who were affected by this tragedy. This recipe is a Chinese restaurant hot plate special, sizzling garlic butter prawns. Around the beginning of 2020, bushfires and a pandemic devastated many Australian regional towns, but they are recovering and rebuilding. I'm on the road to visit some of these areas as they spring back to life and collect some of Australia's best produce along the way. Join me on my road trip for good. My road trip brings me to Kangaroo Island, located 13 kilometres off the coast of South Australia. This is one of the worst bushfire affected areas in the country. Heading to Stokes Bay in the north, people visit here for the coastline, natural beauty and wildlife. It's also home to Shane Leahy, a garlic farmer and volunteer firefighter for the local country fire service. Kangaroo Island is just a wonderful, beautiful place. There's only 4,000 people live on Kangaroo Island and the support that we've received from each other really is just amazing. I started growing garlic on Kangaroo Island five years ago. The climate on Kangaroo Island lends itself to growing very good flavoured garlic. So after harvest for the first six months, we have fresh garlic available. In the off season when Australian garlic isn't available is why I started to develop the dehydrated products. We do garlic salt, garlic granules, garlic powders, so people can use Australian produce all year round. December the 20th we had lightning strikes on Kangaroo Island. For two weeks we fought pretty hard to control those fires. The conditions got very extreme, the winds and temperatures, and on January the 3rd, the fire basically got out of control. I returned home um, after firefighting out at Cape Border on the west end of the island to find that my home had been totally destroyed by the fires. So, pretty devastating at, initially to see that, but it came back to looking into my shed to see that the garlic seed that I'd harvested two weeks earlier was still intact. So the forward thinking was, at least I can put in a crop this year. In my mind, it was like, this is where life starts again. Look at all the stuff you got. Yeah, mate, what are we after today? Uh, a bit of everything, I think. We've put in a 10 acres this year, which is the biggest garlic crop that I've ever grown. And at the moment, looking very good. All right, awesome, today. Thanks very much. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> See ya. Bushfires took a lot from Shane, he took his house, but it didn't take everything, and this is more than a basket of garlic. This is Shane's future. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, watching one of these babies come to the table at a Chinese restaurant was about as happy as I could get. The sizzling hot plate is kind of an icon of the westernised Chinese restaurant. But if I'm entirely honest with you, as an adult, I'm not that much of a fan of them. Quite often things like prawns, which are very delicate, are served on them. And if you're cooking prawns for an extra five, 10 minutes on a cast iron hot plate, they're gonna be overcooked. So to me, they're not ideal, but we are gonna use one today all the same. I'm gonna show you a few tricks to get around the, the drawbacks of your sizzling hot plate, because they are really quite spectacular. Garlic butter prawns might sound more Western than Chinese, but I wanna illustrate some of the differences in kind of how you season a dish in the Chinese style rather than the Western style. We're using prawns, obviously, garlic, obviously, and butter. But we're gonna season this multi-dimensionally. So as well as seasoning with salt, we're gonna add some fish sauce and some Chinese wine to give us some extra umami. Also think about the sweetness of the dish as well, so a touch of sugar as well. Let's get started with the prawns. So to prepare the prawns, I just want to peel them, keeping the heads and shells for stock or oil or something like that but I also want to butterfly them. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so all these shells can go 
into a pot of water. I just bring it to the boil for some easy prawn stock. Butterflying is a simple process. You just cut through the backbone of the prawn, take out the intestine, and then the prawn, as it cooks, will curl outwards and give you this kind of flower shape of the prawn. You often find when you're running your knife down the back of the prawn, it will start to take some of the intestine out with it, which is making life really easy. But you can also see how the shape of these prawns starts to develop. So as that cooks, you know, rather than being a prawn that just curls up that way, it'll curl sort of around and out at the same time and give you that lovely flower prawn shape. Okay, so the prawns are butterflied, and now it's time to velvet them. So what's velveting, you're probably asking. Now velveting is an ingenious part of Chinese cooking. What it is, is marinating in a slightly alkaline solution, so not acidic, basic, or alkaline. And what that does is it stops proteins from joining together too strongly. So when proteins aren't tightening up and joining together too strongly, your meat or seafood is gonna be more tender. There aren't too many alkaline things in the food world, but things like egg whites or flour and actually even regular old tap water that has mineral contents that make it a little bit alkaline are really good for this process. I'm not gonna use egg whites with my prawns because I think actually when you do egg whites and prawns together, you can add a bit too much protein and in the cooking process, it can coagulate a bit too much. But I am gonna use a bit of corn flour and a bit of regular old mineral rich tap water that's gonna give a slightly alkaline solution here. And now I just wanna massage the corn flour and the water into the prawns. Now this is a really light example of velveting. Quite often what you'll see in traditional Chinese cooking is the addition of egg white or even massaging the flour solution into the prawns and rinsing under running water for sometimes even hours on end. When water is mineral rich and a little bit alkaline, that will really tenderize the prawns and also remove a lot. You can see this is turning slightly pink here. A lot of the, the pink or the red coloring from the prawns, which gives you those you know, lovely white crystally prawn dishes you often see in Chinese cooking. I'm not so fussed with that. I don't mind a bit of pink in the prawns that I'm cooking here. And this is probably good enough for me. So I'll just put these to the side for a little bit, wash my hands and I'll come back and start making my garlic butter sauce. The sauce obviously starts with this, Shane's Kangaroo Island garlic. Now a really important thing with Chinese cooking is you don't want to cut garlic too small for a general stir fry type dish. That's because garlic can burn really, really easily. So I want to cut this to sort of roughly chopped, I guess you'd call it, rather than finely minced, so that it doesn't burn too quickly when we cook it in the butter. Garlic chopped, prawns ready to go. It's time to head to the stove for a kind of a, a two-step cooking process. So the first step is oil blanching. Oil blanching is something you've probably seen in Chinese restaurants before. Wok full of hot oil, ingredients quickly, flash fried in there and then removed. Now for home cooking, I don't think that's the easiest way of doing it. You know, it takes a bit of skill to manage a whole wok of hot oil, transferring oil in and out of it. So I use a separate cooking vessel, like this deep frying pan here. I'm just gonna quickly cook the prawns and remove them before we stir fry them. Thank you. 
Before the prawns go in, I want to get my sizzling plate up to temperature. And I've just rubbed it with a bit of oil, it's cast iron. So I want to heat it up nice and early, straight onto the heat. Now it's wok time. Because we're using butter, this is a slightly different recipe. Woks often are really tossed over high heat, but butter will burn in a wok at a high cooking temperature. So at a relatively low temperature, I just want to heat the butter and kind of infuse the garlic into it. I don't want to brown the garlic too much. So This frying really does release the aroma of the garlic, but you don't want to brown it too much for this dish. You know, sometimes you want that toasty garlic, but for this, you want it to be still relatively blonde. Now's where it kind of departs into a more Asian style sauce. I'm going to add some stock, our prawn stock, seasonings, shouting wine, fish sauce, and a touch of sugar as well. Give that a taste to make sure it's seasoned correctly. Mm. Now, because I don't want the prawns to keep cooking too much on the sizzling plate, I'm gonna add some sliced raw onion onto the plate. That's gonna keep the prawns actually up off the metal so they don't overcook. I'll add the prawns into the garlic butter sauce. Toss it together. And I want to create an emulsion now to finish this. So a bit of cornstarch and water to thicken the sauce. And that can go straight on the sizzling hot plate. Sizzling garlic butter prawns.